Hi guys, it's uh, Mona here, bringing you uh, The Dan Show, your healthy dose of dive safety tips and so much more. In this week's show, we're going to be talking about asthma and diving and, you know, what's the big deal? Can you or can't you dive? So kick back, relax and enjoy the show. Hey Monet, good to be here. Yeah, always good to have you here on the show. So, asthma and diving, is this a big concern uh, for divers? Um, you know, what triggers, I guess, an asthma attack? And um, from the stats that we have via the, the Dan um, kind of uh, office is that we find out that quite a few divers don't actually know that they have this problem. Right. Yeah. Asthma is quite common. Um, low estimates is about 15% of individuals. Now, mm. what is asthma? It's essentially a low-grade inflammation in the airways of, of the lungs mm -hmm. that cause the airways to constrict in response to a variety of triggers. And the triggers can be an allergy, often cold air, infections, or what we're concerned about, exercise and dry air, mm. as one might be exposed to during diving, yeah. or saltwater aspiration. Okay. In other words, getting a, an inhalation of seawater through spray, either because of a leaky mouthpiece or just by accidental um, leakage around the mouthpiece. Yeah. If your lungs constrict, the issue is really twofold. The one is you can't breathe properly. Yeah. Okay. So carbon oh, dioxide yeah. buildup, tight, chest. tight chest. chest, and you can ultimately have problems because of carbon dioxide. Mm. The other is the possibility of trapping of gas. In other words, the risk of lung overpressure injuries. Oh, yeah. Now, in truth, that doesn't happen very often. So, mm -hmm. asthma is actually infrequently associated with lung overpressure injuries and severe injuries or death as a result of that. Okay. But what we do find is that people essentially get out of breath to the extent that they can lose consciousness mm -hmm. or panic or become incapacitated. Okay. So, that's the issue with diving. And until I would say maybe five years ago, asthma and diving were mutually exclusive. In other words, if someone said you had asthma, mm. that's it. There's no diving. Absolutely, yeah. But that's changed a lot for mm. a variety of reasons. One is because a lot of asthmatics dive and they seem okay. Second is that modern medication is actually very, very benign, we would call it. In other mm. words, the chances of having a problem with long-acting cortisone inhalation and long-acting bronchodilators, which means it opens the airways, yeah. is so stable. In other words, it keeps your lung function stable to such an extent mm -hmm. that the concerns have been alleviated to a large yeah. extent. So the issue is now not whether you have asthma or not, mm -hmm. but whether the asthma is controlled. Okay. So if your baseline lung function is within normal limits and the response to exercise is such that it doesn't close up, mm -hmm then you would not be precluded from diving. Okay. Now, having been given the uh, certification to be able to dive mm. doesn't mean you'll always be able to dive on a particular day. In okay. other words, you may still have breakthrough events. Mm. The diver may still have occasions where it's not appropriate for them to dive, yeah. just like it would be for you and I if we were, uh, were to have a head cold okay. and can't equalize. So same right. principle. So on the day, you Correct. just don't feel great or something's in the air. Or Absolutely. Yeah. Well, more specific than that, what we recommend for people who are asthmatics mm -hmm. is to get what we call a peak flow meter. Okay. In other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can assess the airflow of your particular lungs mm over a period of time and that's almost like your fingerprint yeah. and then what you would do two days up to the dive is you would monitor that there's no more than a 10% change so okay. if your airway or airflow function is going down mm. then clearly your lung function isn't stable okay. but you don't need to see a doctor every day you know before yeah. every dive trip clearly you want your asthma followed up and that should be done at least annually but it brings the control back into the individual diver, mm. who then still needs to be sensible, 
but it's no longer a blanket. Okay. No. Now these flow meters, are they easy to come by? Yes, yes, you can get them at any large pharmacy outlet. You don't need a prescription for them. Okay. And the medication obviously would be prescribed by a doctor. Mm. We would recommend if you do have asthma to go to a diving physician because then they can address the diving issues as well as the asthma issues. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people who uh, are outside of the field of diving would recommend medication but not necessarily focus on the level of control you actually need for the asthma okay. and for the diving. So yeah. if you go to a diving physician, then you get the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. optimal asthma treatment and actually the considerations relevant to okay. diving. Now, uh, when you talk about the control factor, that would be in a way also how long the, the, the medication would last for once you've used it. Is that so or not necessarily? That's a very good question. The, the control medication, in other words, the long-acting cortisone and the long-acting mm. bronchodilators typically work for many hours, mm. so 12 hours plus. Oh, wow. okay. But the rescue remedies, um, the usual Ventolin Ventees, mm. they only work for about four hours, so the chances are that they will wear off during the dive. And that was mm. one of the reasons why previously asthma was not considered appropriate See. for diving. And we had people that really innovated uh, mouthpieces and actually attached asthma pumps yes. to the regulators. It was quite scary, wow, okay. but with a modern medication, that's no longer necessary. Wow. But you so, should be stable. That's the big okay. thing. So, I mean, uh, before the countdown, one, two, three, go off the butt, you shouldn't quickly take a, uh, a not little... Not a good uh, idea. Uh, okay, so that's not the way to do it then, I guess. All right. <laughs> but bottom line is, uh, if you have asthma... Um, all is not doomed. You go correct. see the, the correct uh, medical physician, preferably yep. a, a diving yep. doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, get an assessment, see what best uh, yes. uh, uh, advice they have, I guess. It's about control. Mm -hmm. It's about controlling the asthma, and if it's controlled, yeah. then you can dive. And uh, do they have any sort of depth restrictions they should dive to, or does it depend on how bad the asthma is that they have? That's an excellent question. Mm. In principle, if your lung functions are normal, mm. then there shouldn't be a depth restriction. However, one always wants to make provision for some sort of decompensation during a dive. In other words, if you have a medical issue and you'd be able to respond if you didn't have a significant delay, then you clearly don't want to be doing dives that require in-water stops that are extensive or are at depths where return to the surface mm. would be unduly delayed. Okay. So that holds true for other conditions as well. Mm. Uh, people with controlled diabetes, for instance, yeah. the same sort of considerations would apply, that if there's a crisis, you don't want to now deal with 90 minutes of decompression. Yeah. So that's the bigger mm. issue. So no decompression diving is typically okay. what would be, I mean, it's generally recommended for, for recreational diving anyway, mm. But with asthmatics, we would emphasize that even more. Okay, so go have fun, and that's pretty much yep. that. Yep. Well, guys, uh, I think there's some uh, useful tips uh, that you've just received there. However, as always, we've got some great content uh, via articles, um, uh, YouTube, and audio type podcasts. So uh, we'll provide those in the show notes. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up on the YouTube channel, and if you like, you can always subscribe. Otherwise, you can uh, log on to the website. It's www.dansa.org for all things Dan. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and thanks for being here, Dr. Franz. Always great to have you around. Yeah, and um, yeah, any parting thoughts possibly? Well, again, just give us your comments. If there are areas in diving that are particular concern to you, uh, you could just pop us a question. And uh, if we think that it would benefit other people as well, uh, other than the individual answer we give you, we'd actually put it on a podcast and we can learn from your experience and we're divers helping divers and that's what Dan is about and what we'd love to do and that's why we're doing this. So thank you, Mornay. Uh, pleasure. Well, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching the show and until the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.